Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today, we're going to be looking at a cool, well, what are we going to call this? An animation tool or a game engine? Both of them actually apply, as we will see in just a second. I was actually looking for a tool for doing infographics, specifically for doing animation, vector graphics kind of stuff, uh, for tutorials on this channel. And a uh, user on the Game From Scratch Discord, SEO, by the way, go join the Discord. Great place. Link down below. Uh, put me on to this guy right here. This is called the Wick Editor. And it is, as I said, combination of an animation tool and a um, game engine, and we will see exactly what that means in just a second. Let's go in a bit of a demo. So first off, I click baited you a bit with a nice looking title, but I'll show you how to go ahead and create what we had for the original image. It's actually pretty straightforward. I have a collection of assets, a background, a sky, and a space marine. I basically just load those all up. You'll see they'll import in, and then we basically start putting things together. Now, so we drop in our sky somewhere around here, for example, and you can you can change it, rotate it using these control points. By the way, there is uh, control Z undo support. So there we go. There is our sky in the background on our canvas. Now we can go ahead, drop in a background. Again, everything anchors around its center point, by the way, which is a little confusing because it takes a bit of time to get used to. But so there we go. So we got our sky in the background to our image. Let me just make sure that we're covering that. Yeah, so only to the top. All right, there we go. And then finally, let's drop in our space marine. And there we go. Let's just drop him down a little bit in size. And there it is. And basically, that was the title graphic you saw. Oops. That was the title graphic you saw. So that's how you can compose things from pre-existing art. So now we're going to move into a much more ghetto world of showing you some animation. So let's go over here, and we can drop in, create a new project. So you see here you've got a number of options, 1080p, 720, custom size. You can create it square of the default value. Let's make a 720p animation this time. Just go ahead and apply it. Background color will be white. So like so, close that down. Oh, maybe I need to do a new. All right, so let's do a new new project. Okay, so now we're set to our new resolution. We are good to go. So now we can show you some of the more simple terms here. Uh, we've got drawing tools across here. We've got a timeline here with various different layers available. So we could, in any sense, have a background layer that's static. So I come in here, let's say, for example, let's do, so we're going to do the bouncing ball post-apocalypse edition. So here we go. There is our post-apocalyptic environment. Let's give this a weird aspect ratio by bringing it straight up like so. All right, so there's our environment that we are working in. Now I'm going to go ahead and do another layer on top of that. And we can go ahead and start drawing. So with our layer selected, let's go to our brush tools. Uh, we can pick our color up here like so. So let's make a red bouncing ball. Uh, we've got the options of the stroke color, the brush size, uh, the feathering of the brush. I think that was called smoothing of the brush. And you can have it pressure sensitive and have it so the brush be on the inside or outside as well. And now we're just going to go ahead and red ball. All right, there we go. So there is the ball in our scene. So you've got a single keyframe. I'm going to jump forward in time to right here. And you're going to find, oh, it just disappeared. So now what we could do is go ahead and draw another frame. And then we'll get press play over here. Well, that's not the desired effect, is it? So what we want to do now is basically take this first keyframe on the layer and have it last the entire animation. So there we go. Perfect. But you'll notice we kind of just disappeared, and our animation probably isn't the smoothest that we want. And we're also somehow in the background. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to move this layer above that layer so that we don't draw behind. So that's what was happening there. Our bottom layer has transparency, so we're basically falling behind it. So if you want to have that, by the way, you can do that. So here we go. Our ball is now in the scene. Uh, let's go grab this guy right here. And now next frame, we could just basically go ahead. Oh, and if, say we want to smooth in between these two frames, we can grab here and we can go add, oops, wrong one. Go to here, do an add tween, and it will smooth in or interpolate the animations between those two points. So we go to here, and now let's go over to this point in time. We'll create a new frame. We'll put our ball there, and we grab that guy between that sucker, and then we could go from there to here, and we'll add a new frame right there. And once again, between that sucker, and new frame here. This, let's make this a really squishy ball. All right, so there we're super squished, like so. And you know the drill by now. And then finally, let's bounce back up, like here. All right, and between and then finally let's do it pretty much off screen there we go so there is our masterpiece animation we can go ahead and now so we've got 
And then we've got this random frame over here that I, oh, I didn't tween between these two. All right, so let's just do that as well. Tween. All right, there we go. So here is our uh, epic animation. We actually can also, if we wish to, as we walk through the timeline, which by the way, you can navigate this way as well. Um, you can uh, have uh, onion skinning here show up. So it'll show you uh, as we go through ghosts of the, so you can see where the previous frame of animation was. So if you're tweaking things, you want to make things work over time, you've got these onion frames available, kind of show you how the animation is working. And let's go ahead and see our epic ball animation. Oh, very nice. And there's a couple things that you can do on top of this. So that's just a straight out animation tool. And if that's all you want to use it for, that is completely and utterly an option at this point. You could consider yourself done. There's the animation I want to make. Let's just export this out. Speaking of export, just come on up here to export. And we have a couple of options. We could export this out as an animated GIF or as a video in beta format. And then we've got interactive options. We can export it as a zip or an HTML file that could be exported out to your games, uh, you, you know, your hosted site of choice. Or we could export out an image sequence. Now, this would ultimately be useful if what you were doing here was creating frames for, if, you, if you're just basically using this as an art program, for creating frame-by-frame -frame animations of sprites or whatever, you could export them as an image sequence or as an SVG uh, which is not animated, or we can also export it out just straight out as an audio track, just the audio aspects. We'll get to audio in just a second. Um, but oh, actually here, I'll, I'll showcase that right now. So we could go ahead, built in audio right here. We got a couple of sounds built in. Most of these are just blips and blops. So let's drop a long beep into our scene. Oh, so you select it once, it's now available. Long beep down here, and we can add it as a new layer. Actually, let's create a new layer for that. And we can drop long beep into the scene. Come on. Like so, I'm pretty sure that's how I did it. Maybe I need to plus. All right, let's drop long beep in there. Come on, long beep. Oh, maybe it's got to be on an existing layer. All right, so there we go. We've got it uh, now a soundtrack in place. Now, it's not the greatest soundtrack, but it is in place. All right, so there's how you can see that basically you can have the sound trigger when you go through stuff and so on. Uh, we're in a solid place for sure. So we've got the various different exports out. Now let's look at some of the programmability side of things. So again, I'm going to start a new project to demonstrate this, and we're not going to save anything we've done so far. So let's say you want to use this as a bit of a game engine. What are your options there? Well, the easiest way to showcase this is to use one of these built-ins. I wish they had more of these. I definitely could use more to make sense of things. So you've got some interface stuff that you could work with, but the first one I'm going to show you is keyboard controls, and that is now imported. All right, so that is a WIC object. You could save things out as WIC objects, by the way, so you could create your own and then export them back in. So if you had like a WIC object as your main player, you could then export that out as a WIC object. It was one of the options up here. Uh, I think it was, all right, where did WIC objects go? Hmm. Hmm. Thought it was up here. Maybe I'm grabbing the wrong spot. Basically, you can export things out as a WIC object. Oh, no, save, sorry. And it'll save it as a WIC file. Now, I just kind of spoiled myself. You'll notice that that just downloaded. Yeah, yeah, I've been lying to you a little bit. Well, not lying. I guess I've been misleading. This is a web application we are running in my browser. If you want to check it out, it is available at editor.wic.com editor.com. So anyways, you can save things out as an individual object. So I could create my own character here and have multiple frames of animation all defined for him. And then I could drop that into another scene. And this is how you can start structuring your own game together. So now that we've got this keyboard control wick object, let's drop that in. There we go. So there is our guy. It is the graphic that is set up. You can notice there's a timeline. So we can do edit timeline on that one. Okay, there's nothing defined for it. So let's just go on back. Uh, which I can do over here out of the timeline. And then what we've got here, again, this guy selected, you'll notice here, scripts, update. Oh, let's take a look at that. Oh, look, hey, there is a code editor in here. It's JavaScript based code, and you can actually go ahead and define logic on this guy. So for example, if I want to do if is key down and then space, like so, I could have it play a sound when I hit the space bar. I don't have any sounds uploaded right now, so let's go ahead and upload. Oh, oh we're gonna have kind of a conflict here. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be happy with that. All right, let's see if I actually can get by multitasking here. I, I can't. Okay. Uh, so you can go ahead, basically, and I could drop in a sound object here. We've got various different options here. So I could drop in a play sound. And then here, you just basically put 
my sound name. So whatever the name is from the asset library. And then when you hit the space bar, that sound is ultimately going to play. And you're going to notice you've got a lot of options around here. So you can play things through the timeline. So if you in the timeline, you defined a number of animations, for example, you could go and play to a certain frame. Uh, you could go forward a flame, frame, back a frame, and so on. So that's how you would animate your character. You've got control over objects position. So you could have it move around X, Y, scale, and so on. Um, you can also do hit testing on its location. We've got inputs for the mouse uh, keyboard. Uh, unfortunately, there is nothing here for game pads. Uh, project settings, you can get the width, height, and the uh, frame rate of the current project. You got the ability to get randoms, and then you have event handling for things like mouse click, mouse hover, mouse load, update, and so, sorry, just load, not mouse load. Uh, all those events can be just handled, so you could have your code basically come in here, and you could do a, a load handler, and it's going to wire up an on event handler for you. And then you add your code right there. So if you wanted to, you could basically say uh, on load. Oh, that was on load. On load. Uh, you could go ahead and then, so we could do something like on load, like so. And then inside of here, uh, you could position your, your object. So we could do something like object dot uh, x this dot x equals one. And that will move you to the 1.0 location on the map and you're done. So you got this full code editor. You can have multiple different handlers. So if we want to go ahead and add another script, you've got the options of handling on various different mouse events, on various different keyboard events, and then on various different timeline events, which can be coded into down here. So you could have the timeline, have it be midway through his walk cycles. For example, you had a sound being played or something to that effect. And using this logic, you could either script your artistic creations, or you could basically turn your artistic creations into games, which is pretty sweet. And then finally, again, when you're done, go ahead and do an export and you've got the interactive options. You basically create it as exports an HTML file that you can then host on your website, or you can have it export as an animated GIF and have that come out. Now, I didn't actually showcase this now that this guy's in here and running. I don't know if I monkeyed up the, okay, let's get rid of the code and go back to the original code. So then when I go to the timeline and press play, if I use any of the arrow keys, I navigate around. So basically this is a lightweight game engine. Uh, and on top of that, if you don't want to use it for that, it is, uh, you can think of it just as a straight out animation tool that has multi-layered support, object importing, and a little bit of scriptability if you want to make it so that part of your, your, um, your animations are actually programmatically handled, or I guess you could even get into a little bit of uh, procedural stuff as a result of this. Uh, the other tools you got here, pen, pencil, eraser, uh, rectangle, circled line, uh, path cursor, text, fill bucket and eyedropper, and then you got your color picker and your color picker for your stroke. And that is essentially it. When you're done with things, once again, click save, it comes down as a WIC object. And if you want to go ahead and open something, you basically upload that WIC object back up and it is good to go. Again, you can also use WIC objects as other things. So you can start using basically kind of like nested prefabs. You create a scene that has say your character with all their animations, and then you can drop that into a more complicated scene. Uh, it's definitely an interesting project, uh, one that I would encourage you to check out. We also got a little tools here for uh, handling on the uh, canvas actions. And then of course, if you want to get rid of something, you can go ahead and delete it that way. And you could do, uh, again, your frame by frame copy and paste. So if you're doing something like, uh, let me just start right here. If you're doing an animation of a tree growing over time, what we could start with is, let's say up here, let's go to let's say brown, orange, and we could start, okay, why did you not select? All right, let's try that again. All right, there we go. Start with the trunk on the first frame, like so. And then on the second frame, we've got nothing. So what you could do is go back to the first frame, do a copy, go to the second frame, do a paste, and then kind of continue on from there and then go copy. By the way, there are hotkeys for everything that I'm doing and then paste. And then we could start doing some, uh, let's add a little bit more here. And then we could add in some leaves now. And then copy and then paste. And we can just kind of keep going and then oh, copy, paste. And there we go. And we just did a five second time lapse of creating a tree. So those tools are there as well. If you want to do more of like a traditional animation approach, you can definitely do so. And once again, you have the ability to onion uh, skin your changes over time. You've got control over how onion skinning works. It's available up here in the settings. And uh, yeah, oh, I guess I got to switch over here in the editor. So you've got choice between standard outlines or tinting in how onion skinning show. You'll find the canvas is very... Um, 
it, it's, uh, oops, I'm still in draw mode. All right, let's go here. It, it's very uh, re um, reactive. It, you never know that you're really in a browser, to be honest, while you're working with this tool. Uh, I'll told, I'm actually pretty impressed. It doesn't do what I want. This is not a great infographics program. If you have something out there that is good for like animating, say, uh, the change of vector graphics over time for doing, you know, like lessons or tutorials, I'd love to hear about it. But I found this guy as a direct result. Uh, and uh, yeah, the Wick editor, it, it's, it's a cool project for sure. So if you're interested in learning a bit more, as I mentioned earlier on, it is free and open source. Uh, it's for creating games, animations, everything in between. There's a bunch of tutorials out there that walk you through how to do things, especially if you start looking at how to like hook multiple rooms together. Um, those details are there. Now, I don't think that you're going to have any tools in place for keeping stateful data. So I wonder how that works, how you can actually carry information over between different rooms, because uh, that's going to be a limitation of any kind of a more complex game. But uh, that is out there. If you're interested, there also has their legacy editor available. And as I mentioned, to start all this off, or actually, I just mentioned this about 20 seconds ago, it is an open source project. It is available under the GPL v3 license. It is up on GitHub. I will, of course, link this with the linked article down below that also has a link to the editor if you want to go Go ahead and check all of this out. Um, the code quite obviously is in, uh, it, it's browser based. So we're looking here if this is uh, JavaScript based. I don't know if you could bundle this into Electron and make it run locally. I'm actually not 100% certain, uh, but yeah. Oh, and by the way, these instructions are for Mac and Linux, but I did everything on, uh, oh yeah, you can locally install it using NPM bring it down locally. You can see how you could run it on your own local server instead of theirs. Uh, but if you do want to check it out, you basically just head to the link there, and you're in. Nothing required. Boom, you're in. There's no uh, real storage or any other details or anything else right there. Uh, this one is 100%. Ooh, yeah, go ahead, load. Uh, this one is 100% uh, community supported. So if you like what you see, do sure be check out their patron or uh, whatever else. And yeah, that that is it. It's definitely a cool project. I, I'm I'm not 100% certain how you would use this one specifically in terms of is it strong enough to be a game engine for simple games? Yes. Is it strong enough to be a game engine for more compl complicated games? Not really. So you use this more for small web widgets kind of thing you want to embed on your own site or for teaching people the basis of art and animation and coding. It's a solid choice there. But if you want to just straight graphics tool, the fact that you can export things out as an image sequence or similar, you could definitely use it for creating your game style graphics, especially if you wanted a tool that was online. And again, completely free and completely open source. So if you want to make changes to it, granted, GPL v3. So if you do make changes to the source code, you have to release your source code changes. But you could ultimately use this as the basis for your own uh, engine to work from. And the timeline, the tools are here. The, there's already script embedded in here. There's actually quite a bit to work from. And it's just a polished and nice experience. So anyways, that is Wick Editor. Let me know what you think. Also, do you have an infographics program you would recommend to me, commercial or otherwise? Let me know. I'm in the market for one right now. And that's how I found this guy. All right, let me know what you think. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.